Hey everybody, this is David from the True Blue Sand Blog. Susan may stop by, I don't know. She's in the house working up tomatoes today. And uh, this is a job I really don't enjoy. Uh, this is uh, our old 94 Chevy pickup truck. And a few weeks back, the, uh, the, uh, the cylinder on the other side started running brake fluid out on the ground. And uh, we were we were able to drive it yet, but it was you know it was something you had to fix pretty quickly. So we got uh, we got our uh, got two new brake cylinders, and of course the uh, brake pads were saturated with brake fluid. So we bought a set of new brake shoes. And it's got it's got almost 190,000 miles on those brake shoes, but it's very easy miles. So I bought new brake shoes. I got the other side done and. Today the temperature is only a high of 80, so this is a good day to park in the shade, and uh, we're going to do this side. And uh, I'll be starting and stopping this because it, it'll take me a while. But we'll uh, we'll start out. You gotta you gotta break the before we do anything else. We gotta break the lug bolts loose. So I'm gonna break those loose. After I break them loose, I'll jack it up, put a jack stand under it, and then we'll tear into that thing. So let me break those loose and uh, I'll cut her off and get the jack under it and then we'll come back. That's a good one. That's a tight one. There we go. Okay, got them all broke loose. I'm going to cut her off now, put the jack under it, and we'll come back, okay? And we're back. Got it up on the jack and the stand. So we're safe there. Run these nuts off. Okay, put those in the hub cap. Pull this off. And when you do the brakes on your old Chevy, they want to know the diameter. You had a, basically a 10 or 11 inch drum, and I had to go pull it pull the wheel off to tell them. Anyway, they, if you're not familiar with these, they have the maximum diameter. It's 256.3 millimeters. Anyway, it works out. That's basically a 10 inch brake drum. And we'll see if we can get that baby off of there. Let me see, where's my hammer? Here's my hammer.
And the trouble with these old brakes is uh, your drum extends past the brake shoe in there and you end up with a little rim in there. And as you drive the the uh, brakes get, you know, the brakes wear down, they adjust out and they're running down in a groove basically. So sometimes these can be a little bit difficult to get off. There you can hear them moving. Yeah, she's coming. Off. You have to get it up over that brake shoe. Come on, baby. go and that's off and look at the dirt and crud in there and you can see it has a little bit of an edge around there that's what makes it hard to pull off got a bunch of dirt there try not to breathe it oh boy this is a good time to take pictures too the front and back shoes are different and you've got uh, Let's take this off here. Turn this over. You see you got a spring. A spring across the top there. That's pulling the top of those shoes back to the cylinder. And you've got a you got a spring around the bottom that holds the bottom end together. And you've got your parking brake. That's your parking brake. Uh, let me see. There you can see that that deal that that where that cable comes in. That pulls on a parking brake deal. That sets one shoe. You can see it works up here. Let me see right. It's hard to do with dirty fingers. Anyway, that's part of your parking brake assembly there. And over here on this side, you got an adjuster. That's your adjuster right there. So when you when you back up and hit your brake, that's that little deal works a ratchet. And you got to get all that back together right. The hardest part of this is getting that spring hooked back in on the second drum. You can get one end hooked, and then the other is a real booger to try to hook back in there. That's the part nobody likes. And. Uh, this cylinder is not leaking, but it's got the same age and same miles as the one that was leaking on the other side. And these brakes have been talking. You see all that dirt in there. It makes them chatter. So it was good to take it apart anyway. You pull in the garage and touch the brake as you ease in and it goes chatter, 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 and it's a mess. So anyway, I'm gonna take some still shots of that. And as you take this apart, you lay everything out the way it goes. <laughs> so you have a physical reminder right there in front of you as you start putting things back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shoes off. We gotta, well, we gotta unhook these deals. You gotta push in on those. There's a pin that goes through the back of the drum there, or the back of the face plate, the plate there. You hold out on that. Push in on this, rotate it 90 degrees, and that comes off. And that, that holds the brake shoe back toward the plate. Same on this side. Then you got this spring under here you got to unhook. Your spring up here, right there you got to unhook that. And uh, after we get that all unhooked, 
then we're going to we've got two bolts on the back of that thing uh, on the back of the cylinder and the brake line and uh, you uh, you change that very quickly we'll just barely get any air in that at all and we can blow it out real easy when we're done so okay I'm going to turn this off because I've got to get my fingers dirty and we'll see if we can get all these parts apart and laid out Okay, and this is here's something worth looking at. This is your, uh, your parking brake, emergency brake set. And you see there's a pin that goes through there. And on the back side of that, uh, it's got a, a clip that goes around it, and then you squeeze it together. Uh, that did not come in the kit from Napa, so you've got to save that piece. And the way you get that apart is take a screwdriver and kind of start opening it up. And then you can take vice grips and push it off. And the other thing that's worth mentioning here about that is it's backward from the part that came from Napa. Napa has that pin in there the opposite way. And I don't want to try to push it through. That was pressed in. So we're going to assemble that opposite. And that caused me just a little bit of trouble on the other side. I wasn't paying close enough attention and I started putting it together with with the uh, with this actuator piece on the wrong side and I figured it out pretty quick but uh, pace to take pictures or take really good mental notes when you do this okay so I gotta wrestle with that thing now okay we're back and I got that little dude apart put back together and squeezed it on there so we got that, that new brake shoe got it held on now uh, no springs on it yet and what we're going to do next is change out this cylinder and what we're going to do come over the top and look at that you can see here's your brake line coming in and that's a bolt that holds it on that's a bolt that holds it on this is the bleeder up here so what we're going to do, that has, uh, this is a 94 model, and this is 2021. That, uh, this line has not been loose for 27 or more years. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to tap that on a couple sides with a hammer to crack any rust loose. And I'm going to pour a little brake fluid on that. And I've got a, a cap full of brake fluid, got the lid off the brake fluid. I'll pour that on there and of course you're thinking why not just use penetrating oil and I don't want to take any chance on contaminating the brake fluid in the system with, with, an, with a petroleum product. Um, I've seen the result of that and you know the trucks can go sailing through an intersection when the brakes suddenly no longer work so um, anyway if I'm lu lubricating anything associated with the brake system I use brake fluid and a uh, tool pusher where I worked down in McLeansboro complained one time I said you use more brake fluid than anybody I ever saw but you know I didn't have uh, I didn't have brake failures either so anyway, so, anyway that's what I'm going to do next here's where the action is going to be right here anyway so oh, where's my hammer There's my hammer. Okay. And what you can do with that, and odd thing, a lot of this stuff on this truck is metric. This is 9 sixteenths, so you never know. There we go, got a hammer on it. And then at the end of the hammer, just bang, 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 bang. Get a wrench on it the other way. Get a wrench over here. 
and bang, bang, bang again. That's just to fracture the rust that might be in there, and you know there is. And then, uh, then take this and just pour a little brake fluid on it. Got that on. And we'll give that a feel with a wrench and see if that wants to break. If it doesn't, we'll tap it again. So get a wrench on there. Hey, it broke right loose. Uh, one of the dangers is you want it to break loose, but you also want the uh, you want it to break loose around this tubing also. If that tubing is gripping it, you can twist your tubing off. You don't want to do that, so get her loose, wiggle it good. Make sure you got everything broke loose. Now, we got that broke loose. We're going to snug it back up so it doesn't leak. And we're going to take our bolts off. Okay, so this is hard. You barely get your head in here where you can see. Yeah, that came loose easy. That came loose easy. Okay. Get that bolt out with my fingers. And that bolt's coming loose. So I got them about out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the the tubing out, pull the tubing fitting out. Come on. Yeah, this doesn't want to turn. That tubing's got enough dirt on it that it's difficult to turn. <clears throat> it's turning though, that's the important part. on baby oh yeah I can turn it a little bit and it'll tighten up again it's just rust and dirt on that tube is it makes it a snug fit in that fitting We'll get her back together here pretty quick. Come on. It wants to be wrenched out all the way. Almost there. There, that's loose. Okay. Now get this bolt out the rest of the way. It's dripping fluid. Okay, that's loose. So now. Come on out of there. Okay, that's out. Grab our new one. And you'll note uh, the new one's got a plug in her here. Take that out. This should go right back in. It goes right back in and hopefully we'll get that fitting started right back into it. Yeah, it started. And it's running much better. It's got brake fluid all over that thing now. It's easy, running easy. Okay, that's in. Now we'll get her, see if we can find our holes for her bolts. And you're doing this about half blind. I can't get my head back here to look. And you can see why you use, uh, use your jack stands to do this. This has got my head under here. 
if that truck was to fall down, it'd just it'd break my neck and smash my head, and bust my shoulders, and it would be unpleasant. Probably wouldn't be very quick either. You'd lay there and suffocate while your neck's hurting. <laughs> I always like jacking them up good. Okay, that bolt's running in good. Okay, that bolt's running in good. And now we can tight we'll tighten down our fitting. That in and it will take the ratchet flip that around tighten our bolts got that tight now get this side Got her good and tight. Now, for uh, you know, there's some air in that line now. Probably not much because this, this line turns down right away. So it's just going to have air right here. And what we got to do, we got to fill that cylinder with brake fluid. The way we do this, it's got the bleeder right here. I loosen that and hold uh, and have Susan push the brake pedal down while she's got it down. I tighten it back in again. She lets the brake pedal up. When she's ready to push it down again, I open it up and let her let her blow out. And you can hear that air come out, or actually see it if you put your finger over. You can feel the air come out, and we we'll have that bled out in about four strokes on the brake pedal. And we'll do that before we put the tire back on it. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, start putting the other brake shoe on. I'm going to clean my fingers up here before I touch the camera, and uh, we'll get back to work on that. Okay, here's where we are. Let me zoom out. I got uh, the new cylinder on. I got it partially bled. Susan's going to come out. We'll finish bleeding it after I put the brake drum on. We bled, had to go easy so we didn't blow it out. Got the left shoe on first. Then uh, the right shoe is on after that. Hooking that spring back in here was the hard part. That end, that end has to go on first because it has a long tail. And you got to get this one. And then you got to get your ratchet in here. And your little ratchet hooks down to the brake shoe here, up onto the ratchet. And you got to get it over that uh, split pin. And you got to get the top of it in behind your your uh, spreader. And then uh, the next thing we did, you've got your adjuster right there. See it? The adjuster is on the ratchet. Um, when I put it, the drum up here, it didn't want to go over. So you crank that in until the drum just barely goes over. And it'll be about right when you get it on a few times of backing up. It'll be just right. So uh, anyway, now I shove the uh, drum back on. Let me shove this back up on the tripod here. snug okay we're gonna, gonna loosen that just a bit more pull the ratchet back and uh, move this a little bit move that adjuster a little bit bump them in and we'll see if we go on yeah we got about less than a minute left. That thing's about done. Anyway, you see how she goes. You adjust that until she just goes in. There, now she's going in. Okay, that's about it. Okay, I had to grab the second camera. That camera died. Uh, anyway, I was trying to push that on. I decided it was too tight. Pulled it back off. Held the ratchet and backed it off about another half a turn on that adjuster. 
and then she slid right on it was just uh, the rim was dragging just a little going in once it got to the end it was fine so so that is ready to bleed and then we put the wheel back on pick it up off the jack stand put her down she's ready to drive so we're just about done and that is uh, kind of how a brake job goes really don't like drum brakes they are <laughs> or pain to try to put back together anyway thank you very much for visiting we appreciate the time you spend with us and we'll have this baby back on the road now next project is i've got uh, i've got new pads for the front i need to do the uh, i need to do the uh, wheel bearings i've got over ten thousand on those wheel bearings and i have to drive through a lot of wet roads back and forth between the farm and this house and, and uh, so when i those pads are old while i'm uh, doing my wheel bearings and put new pads on the front those won't be too bad uh, a couple of three you there's uh, two three eighths uh bolts you use an allen headed wrench on to take off caliper comes right off one cotter key run your nuts off pull the wheel off Grease your bearings, put them back together. Pretty, that's pretty quick. That's that's half the work of these drum brakes. So, anyway, pretty good project for a Sunday afternoon. Thank you very much. See you all later.